Our devotional thought today coming from the book of Exodus chapter 28, verse 29, deals that pastoral prayer has no selfishness within it. Now, in our context here in Exodus 28, Moses was to make a breastplate that would go over the chest of Aaron, and it had on it 12 stones with each of the 12 tribes of Israel. And then the scripture says in verse 29, in this way, Aaron will carry the names of the tribes of Israel on the sacred chest piece over his heart when he goes into the holy place. This will be a continual reminder that he represents the people when he comes before the Lord. Now remember with me, Paul said that these things in the Old Testament were written for our instruction. Here's a beautiful set of instructions for pastoral prayer. Do you remember last year when I was teaching you about Paul's prayer from Ephesians and from Colossians and from Romans? And I showed you how the prayer life of Paul, there was, there was no selfishness that's within it as a leader that he was always pouring out his heart, praying for the people. Now, every time Aaron came into the presence of God, he was to carry with him the knowledge right over his heart that I'm here to represent the 12 tribes. I'm here to pray for the people. I'm here to, to stand before the presence of God and bring the needs of the people and the sins of the people before him. Now, brothers and sisters, Ministry hasn't changed. As pastors, as parents, as go group leaders, as fellowship executives, as children's church workers, whatever position of leadership you are in, coming into the presence of God is not a place of selfishness. It's a place where we are there to not just bring our requests, but to come before him and pray for the people. Now, forgive me, a, a prayerless pastor isn't worth very much. In Acts 6, the apostle said, We should not neglect the ministry of the word, nor should we neglect the ministry of prayer. A prayerless pastor isn't worth much. I don't care how good they are at performing on a platform. If they're a prayerless pastor, they're not much good. Now, all of us as leaders need to understand Maybe the greatest thing that we can do is to pray for the people. Now, I learned my prayer life from my grandpa, but I will tell you, during two years of lockdown, when we could not visit you in the home and for, for large seasons we couldn't even have services, I found myself unable to touch you, unable to lay hands on you, unable to give the guys a big pat on the back, unable to, to smile and laugh with the young people. But I found that I was still able to pray for you. And I remember one day saying, God, all I can do is pray for the people, and I feel so helpless. All I can do is pray. And when it hit me, all I can do? Grave. That's maybe the greatest thing that I can do. Now, as a young pastor... We didn't take pictures much because developing pictures in those days, and I know young people, you'll find this very weird, but in the old days, you didn't take a lot of pictures because it caught the film was expensive, and then to develop the pictures, it was expensive. You, you didn't take a lot of pictures. Now, we take 100 pictures just by, you know, because it's all digital. But even from the early days, I would have a list of the members that I would write down and pray for each of the people. Later, I'd be writing down the list of the Connect Group leaders and praying for the people. Later, I was writing down the, the list of the ECS and the CS to be praying for the people. I like having pictures around me on my wall. I like having like a little prayer wall where I can look at families and pray for them. And so many of you give me your pictures, and, and I, <laughs> some of you I have a picture for every year since you've been <laughs> since you've been born, and now you're bringing me pictures of you and your kids, and I love to get to pray for you and look at the pictures and pray for you one by one. When we come into the presence of God, now please listen to me, leaders. I know it's beautiful, and there are times when you come to his presence where his presence is more real than the air that you're breathing. And it's just you're caught up in the glory. 
never forget, those people are to be over your heart. Your children are to be over your heart. Your Go Group members are to be over your heart. Your fellowship members are to be over your heart. The kids in your your children's group, group area are to be over your heart. Those ushers under your bay are to be over your heart. And bring the needs of the people before the Father. 